Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Sunday, August 27th, 2017 edition of VR News. As has become the norm the last few Sundays, we are going to take a look at some VR games released this past week, and of course, virtual reality news. In fact, we're going to start with the news. This first story, pretty interesting, a device called Freemo VR. Researchers behind that device describe it as a holodeck style VR device for animals. It immerses them in an arena, the walls and floors of that arena, computer displays, each screen depicting photorealistic images or video that account for each animal's perspective as it walks, flies, or swims. Now, 10 high-speed cameras surround the entire thing, and they are able to precisely 3D position each animal and adjust scenery accordingly. It's able to do that literally within milliseconds to create the illusion that it's all happening in 3D as if they were moving in changing environments that adjust to their actions. Doing this, they were able to control a fly's flight direction and positioning purely through visual stimuli. They were also able to have mice feel as if the path that they were on was up high and the coolest, I thought, was the zebrafish, who literally swam with space invaders. They had them doing all kinds of teleporting-style games and following digital fish. What makes it so successful is it takes advantage of the way these animals and insects see. The, the exact same thing, if done to humans, for us would be painfully obvious because of our stereoscopic vision and the way we handle depth perception. But for the animals involved, those three types, yeah, it fools them. As a result, researchers are able to do testing on navigation and spatial cognition, something that they just couldn't do or could do only with very much difficulty in the natural environment. Really freaking cool. Imagine, guys, in the future, going to your local lake, beach, hell, swimming pool, and seeing this. Well, Greenwood, he is a director of creative development at Discovery Digital Networks and a fellow by the name of Evans, who's the co-founder of headset maker Avagant. They started working on a device this last December after talking about what it would be like to combine an isolation tank where you float in the dark, silent room alone with a virtual reality device. Rachel Metz, she's the technology review author for the article that I found. She was able to try the device and see what they've come up with so far as a side project in their spare time. She tried an underwater experience and one where she was floating outside the International Space Station. The water environment truly made it feel as if she was floating in space or, of course, swimming. But currently the device, essentially Google Cardboard style device, doesn't have proper tracking. So they required actual people to act as spotters to ensure she didn't smack into the side of the pool during the experience. Greenwood and Evan currently working on positional tracking that, according to them, is even going to accommodate depth in the pool. What a really cool use of virtual reality. Just when you think you've heard of all the possibilities, along comes something like this, which, you know, it might not be something you or I do, but the amount of research that they can do. I mean, NASA, for example, along with their Vomit Comet Boeing, they've used swimming pools to do a lot of space testing, practice drills, etc. for a long time. That's just been common for them. Being able to mix that with VR now just ups the ante on what they're going to be able to do training-wise. Very, very freaking cool. And an update, guys. The Aliens mod that I talked about a few weeks ago that opened up Alien Isolation to Oculus Rift users once again, now compatible for the HTC Vive. The version is 0.3.0. And I've got the link to the GitHub download directly in the description below. So you can click on that. If you like horror VR at all, 
you don't even have to be a fan of the Aliens franchise, you're probably going to love this. You can grab the game pretty damn cheap, pick up the mod, and away you go. Earlier this week, talked about and showed Chroma Labs, which is a particle physics simulator. The work of a single programmer, Sean Tan, it's got a built-in benchmarking tool that will auto-adjust to the number of particles based on the power of your rig. So if you've got the latest GPU and CPU, you're in for a treat. But even if you're at the low end, you're still going to have enough particles to play with and enjoy the experience. You can load up your own external music and literally have the physics and particles react to it as you would with a typical visualizer. What I love is some of the varied things though, and that is why I recommend this. Think of it as a visualizer where you can control every small aspect of the program. You can do stuff like create black holes with particle globs orbiting them that will eventually meet their demise. You can be right in the face of the particles creating explosions smashing them together you can speed up time slow it down same with the physics and then there's optional stuff like gravity playgrounds and what i like the most lava lamp modes this next game is called cosmic awakening probably not the most original plot but it's a game you can play in straight horror exploration mode or via a story mode just a note, currently only teleportation available in terms of locomotion. The game sees you docked on a space station. And this is where I say the uh, plot's a little cliched. You quickly discover not all is as it seems because it appears to be abandoned. Well, the reviews seem to be fairly positive for this game. And if there's one thing I enjoy, it's VR horror games. Just something about them and virtual reality, that immersion, that I just think adds to the horror experience. Form, originally released for the HTC Vive back in June, now available for Rift via Steam or the Oculus Store. You play the character of Dr. Devon Eli. He's a brilliant physicist at the global technology mega conglomerate Mindful Laboratories. What sets you apart from most is your superhuman powers of geometric visualization. You gain that through childhood trauma, Using those powers, you try to uncover the meaning of a mysterious signal coming from an obelisk found deep in the Alaskan wilderness. You try to solve puzzles in dreamlike memories that the obelisk creates in your head. Your attempts could lead you to a new existence or leave you trapped forever. And our last game for this week, Spark of Life. It's an adventure exploration game you play as Nero, a little boy who lives in an enchanted forest along with magical friends. Each day he plays around freely and enjoys the sparkling light of the sun bug who wakes up each day by the morning bell. One day, however, the huge sun bug abducted, causing his magical friends around him not only to lose their powers, but to fall into an eternal slumber. So Nero sets off on a quest to set things right you, of course, control him. Game's out now for Gear VR. Well, and that's it for the games this week, guys. And unfortunately, for the weekend. Just like that, the weekend draws to a close, like it always does. But like it draws to a close, it'll be here again very shortly in a few days. Guys, hopefully you had a good one. Have a fantastic week. As always, cheers.